everyone, it's Vivian. Welcome to the January wrap-up for my 12 cast-ons of 2022 videos. First of all, I'd like to say a big welcome to anyone who's checking me out for the first time. I did have a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new views after my last podcast. So thank you for anyone who's come to see me and check out what goes on here. And also, again, thank you to all my returning viewers. So before we get into what's been going on, if you want to follow me on um, social media or anywhere I'm on Instagram as Vivette Crafts and Reads and I will put that down in the description box below and I also have a Ravelry page where I keep my projects updated so what am I here for well for those of you that saw the last episode I am taking part in the 12 cast ons of 2022 which is being hosted by the lovely Angela of Yarn and Yarn podcast and I will link her podcast down below and the idea is in that over the period between Christmas the 24th December the 24th and 31st of January you cast on between one and 12 projects to work on throughout the year. And this is the first year that I've done it. I've watched Angela's podcast for a while now, and I know she did it last year and possibly the year before that as well, but this is the first time that I decided to take part. And I twelve cast on 12 projects. And this video now is just to update you on the work that I've progress that I've made during January. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first one. So my first project that I cast on the 24th of December was a pair of vanilla socks. So they kind of was also my Christmas Eve cast on as well as my first 12 of 12. And I've done, I've made some progress on them. So for the first one, I'm using, doing them concurrently as you can see. The first one I've actually completed sock. And all I've got to do now is put the heels in and I've put a little marker where I'm going to do an afterthought heel. So this is a 50 gram self-striping sock yarn from Stripey Cat Yarns. Um, and it's got rainbow stripes and it's got stellina in it as you can see and I've used up literally all of the um, 25 grams of this one with the exception of a little bit of the purple that was just left at the end of this one so that's where I've got with number sock number one with sock number two I'm this far so all I've got to do now is put in the last couple of stripes of the orange into purple and the blues and then I shall be ready to put the heels in both of them so hopefully these will get done quite soon so that's my first project my second project was a cable hat and part of the ones that I'm doing is I'm doing hats for charity I've done this in the past before so I aim to get 12 hats knitted throughout the year for charity and the first one that I cast on was a cable hat and I have actually finished it so that's my January um, charity hat finished so it's called the 3AM cable and it's a nice cable, it's a really simple cable and it's off. I haven't blocked it yet and I haven't dyed in the end yet but I have actually finished it and it, it's quite a nice knit. I knit this out of um, Drops Charisma um, which is a DK yarn. It's quite a rustic yarn but when you wash it and, and block it it does soften quite nicely so that is my first of my charity hats that will now go into the pile ready to be donated at the end of the year. That's project number two. Project number three is a crochet project. So the lovely knitting group that I go to on a Monday afternoon, we are crocheting five inch granny squares that are all going to be sewn into blankets and then donated to a local care home. So, so far I've done four. Let me see if I can do these all at the same time. So there's four. So there's a blue one, yellow one, and a pink and burgundy one and I'm literally just using scraps of yarn because they're only five inch squares which is for me on a four millimeter four millimeter hook is six rounds it doesn't take much to do them in terms of yardage so that's the first four done so this is a year-long project um, and we just literally like so there's quite a few of us doing them and we're just going to sew them together and see how many blankets we can make to donate to charity and to our local care home so that's project number three project number four is another charity hat so when oh, that's all falling down never mind so that one I'm using leftover yarn again and so far I've made this much progress on it so when I spoke to you last time can you see my little things I have and I hold you I have copied you shamelessly copied your little idea um, but I haven't got lovely burnt in ones I've just got some little wooden trees that I got off eBay and just written numbers on them so I can remember which project is which Um so for this one I literally have just done a few more rounds so when I spoke to you last time I'd literally just cast on burgundy I've now striped in a grey and I'm going to continue burgundy grey burgundy grey 
until I run out of burgundy basically and then I'll just finish it off in grey. So I just literally do 10 rows of 10 by of 2 by 2 rib and that's when I change each one. So that is project number 4. Project number 5 was my hand spun mittens that I showed you how I had completed last month. So I cast those on and I knit those within 3 or 4 days because they were hand spun. I was so interesting to see how they were going to knit up so I just carried on knitting on those ones. So what I've done is I've actually substituted in another project to that number now because of the fact that I have finished those ones. So I had got something to work on because I did those ones really quickly. And what I substituted in is the Radiate Jumper by Holy Locatelli. Holy Locatelli, yeah. I might pronounce that wrong. Everyone's going to be shouting at the screen now. I've got a picture. Now I don't think I did the big picture. Let me show you this one. Most of you will have seen it anyway. So this is the jumper here. And as you can see, you start off with one colour doing a slip stitch pattern and then you bring in a second in your main colour. And the two colours that I am doing, my first colour is called Mystic Narwhal and it's by Cast Yarns. Now, unfortunately, Saz is no longer dying um, yarn. But so it's Mystic Narwhal. And it's a DK Superwash Merino, 225 metres. And it is this colourway here. Which might blow out on screen. Might not. But I'll show you what I've done and it, you'll see it better that way. So this is the progress that I've made on it so far. And as you can see, I've done the bulk of the top. Actually, that's inside out. Hold on a moment. That might show you better if it's not inside out. All the needles are going to go all oh, I'm doing these on round short. Right. Let's try that again. So this is what I've done so far. You can see I've brought in the slip stitches and I've now started to bring in the second colour. And the second colour I'm using is this beautiful blue. So it's not a navy, but it's like a dark denim. And this one is a Starcraft DK Light or DK Life rather, yeah, Starcraft Life DK, and it's in the colourway Mixtures Blue Haze. Now, I can use this one. I can't knit the jumper in pure acrylic because I just get so much static off of it. It's unbelievable. But this one has got is an acrylic wool mix. So it's 25% um, wool, 25% acrylic. And that 25% is just enough to actually withdraw the static so that I can wear it. So I'm really looking forward to this, seeing how this works out, because I think that the blue with these lighter colours goes really, really well together. So that's my project number four, and I'm really enjoying working on that now. And I just want to get to the bit where I just see it all come together. So that's project number four. Project number... No, it's not. That's project number five. Apologies, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. Project number six is my spinning wheel project. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I posted... Um, an update on that one just how much I, I've done on it I've got a 200 gram braid that is just a mixed um, one it's nothing specific and I split it into two, two 100 grams and I'm spinning those and then I'll two ply them back so what I'll do is I'll insert a photograph up here just to show you how much I've done I'm about th three quarters of the way through the first 100 grams so I'm doing quite well on it and then once I've actually spun it two plied it and got the eyelid I'll then decide what sort of project I want to do with it because I'm not sure at the moment it just depends on how much meterage I've got with it so that's project number six project number seven is my NYX shawl which I showed you the start of last month this is a shawl that I am knitting that I'm really enjoying again but I have had to make a change to it so this is a shawl by Melanie Berg who is Maryland so that's the, the picture of it there and the colours that I'm using, for the main colour, which is the cream in that picture, I'm using this King Cole Merino 4-ply. And then to mix it, I showed you last um, month, a it was a, an autumn colour, and it was like all different colours of autumn. But when I started to knit it in, it didn't show up well enough because of it had some dark spots, which were very, very close to the main colour. So I swapped it out for this colour, which is a blush colour. Now this is an 
exclusive colourway. So back in 2018, I went to Grace, who is Babel's Travelling Yarns, her knitting retreat in Ireland. And as part of that, the ladies that were there, we all got given two colours. This colour and another colour and a shawl pattern to do a shawl as part of the exclusive um, thing for the, the retreat. But I didn't actually knit the shawl. But I'm using the colour, and that's Grace's thing. I, she's not dying at the moment because she's had a very busy year of getting married having a baby, moving house, um, but the colourway, like I say, it's an exclusive one, so it's called Deep Blush, and it's 100 grams and 416 metres, and it's a merino cotton and nylon mix, and if I show you the shawl itself, you'll see how it goes much, much better in what I've been doing. So as you can see, I've now finish the first bit which is where I was the marker was where I was when I last podcast and since then as you can see I've incorporated the new colour done the first bit of the slip stitch panel and now I'm back on the eyelets again um, so yes yeah, so I'm really pleased with what I'm doing and I think this colourway works much better than the original one so I'm looking forward to doing some more work on that this month so let me just put this all back in here before it all flies everywhere that was project number seven, which was the NYX. So project number eight is yet another spinning project, but this time it's drop spindles. So this is living in my carry around drop spindle bag that I can take with me. And you can see it's got quite a bit of floof on it. And I am just spinning my way through a mixed bag of fibres that I got when I first learned to start spinning and I just got some cheap ones. I think this was a D stash that somebody was doing just just to practice really but I've become quite addicted to drop spindling I must admit and when I spoke to you last time I had completed the yellow and I was halfway through the pink I've now finished the pink I've also finished a teal colour and I'm now just started spinning like a brown just a, a general brown fibre so I'm getting quite a collection. I've got another free spindle, so I wouldn't be all surprised if I fill that one up as well before I start doing anything with them. But like I say, I've got just literally bumps of fibre. And once I've done them, i spun them, and I need to get them off the spindles because I want to spin some more, I will just... Oh, excuse me. I will literally just make them into a centre pull ball, and then I shall ply, chain ply them on themselves. And they're all going to go into a blanket that is going to be a year-long blanket just of my hand spun so I can just doc, doc, doctor not doctor that's not the word document where I've been going throughout the year and how I've been getting on with my hand spun so that is project number eight so my next project which is project number nine was the owl remittance which was the intarsia pattern where you worked it straight and you know so that the owl was on the front of the hand Unfortunately, I haven't touched that one since I last spoke to you. Part of it is, is it's not calling me. So when I'm looking at my patterns or my projects to work on of an evening, I'm looking at it and I'm going, no, I don't fancy that one tonight. So it will sit for a little bit longer. And then if it does stay there for a little bit longer and I still don't touch it, I should probably fog it back and think of something else because it really isn't singing to me, you know? So if I'm not singing to me, then there is no point doing it because it's just going to languish forever. So my project after that was project number 10, which is my Hawthorn, black Hawthorn hat. And I have finished that one as well. So that again was another pattern that I'd cast on and I'd seen Angela of Yarn and Yarns test knit it. So I'd put it in my queue as soon before it was even released, ready for when it was. And this is my finished hat. So it's a top down hat, a top hat, a top down hat. No, Vivian bottom up so I did the longer brim with it that you can fold up and then the pattern and I decided to add pom-poms to mine so I've got two pom-coms I've got this one which is the darker one and you can see that goes really nicely and when I feel like I want to be slightly brighter I've got this one which is the one that's on it at the moment so that when we go for our walks along the seafront Sean can't lose me literally cannot lose me so that is it with the darker what with the bright one and these I've got a button inside and these are just interchangeable and then when I want to be less conspicuous, I've got this one. But this is a really lovely pattern, as you can see. I 
it's got a lovely pattern inside it so the yarn that i used the purple is an opal solid called violet and the green was from the love of yarns and it's called the F the farmer's fields and it's really lovely and i've got loads of the green left over so i'm thinking i might even do some and i've got purple as well a matching pair of mittens not sure yet fingerless mitts but we'll see but yeah so that's my black hawthorn hat and it is very warm so that was project number 10 You're almost finished aren't you lucky project number 11 is sean's christmas socks and again i haven't really done much on those because i've got a long time to do those they live in the car and i just do it for 10 minutes if i'm waiting for someone or if i'm going somewhere and i'm early something along those lines so they're just my car project so i think i've done a, a couple of rows on it to be honest now my final project is the cow that i was doing and it's living in a new bag to me look at this look at this beauty this is from jibby russo's and i saw it she posted on instagram that she was doing a shop update and i saw it and i thought i've got to have it and it's lovely it's really really lovely um just a simple zip bag lined but i like them like that so my 12th project is called the trip and vertical cow i can show you the picture again that's the, the picture there and i've done quite a lot on it since i last saw you because again once you get the pattern in your head it is quite a simple one to do of an evening the yarn i'm using is a west yorkshire spinners signature it's the zandra road signature yarn and this one's called woodland awaken that's it there and that's the the colorway so when i last spoke to you i'm gonna to have to i've probably got it inside out actually yep yeah. hang on a minute when i last spoke to you i was see i'm a lot further on at the front of the pattern which is great that's it yeah so if i hold it like that you can see it's that's how it will be when it comes down so that is the trip and vertical cow and again it's another one that i'm working on quite a bit of an evening because it's once you've got the pattern in your head it's quite easy to follow and i've just pulled a stitch on that one i'm gonna have to sit and repair that tonight aren't i never mind so that is all of my projects that's all the progress i've made on all of them like i say some of them i've done more than others and again it's really what's calling to me at the moment but i have decided for february to do it slightly differently what i'm going to be doing going forward so for those of you that follow angela you know that she rolls the dice at the beginning of every february or every month rather and the right the, the dice dictates what project she works on for february so she might have one that says mood or she might have one that says um socks or it could be hand spun or it could be different options and she picks four and those are the four that she works on during the month but i'm doing something similar so i've got some 12 sided dice and I'm going to include a little clip here of me rolling the dice and then I shall come back to you. So, as you can see from the dice, the four projects that he's chosen for me to work on for February was number three, which is my crochet project, the crochet squares that I showed you earlier, which I have some somewhere, these ones. So those will be quite easy, because on a Monday when I go to Knit Club, I will be able to just sit and do those, so that will be quite a bit done on that one. Next project was number four, which is the second of the charity hats, the burgundy and grey striped one. So that'll be another one because I want to try and get a charity hat done a month. So by that coming out of the, the dice roll, that means that I'll be able to work on that one quite a bit. So that's another one that's a good one. The other next project, it was number 11, which is Sean's Christmas socks. So again, I shall work on those during the month, but they will probably be less because like I said, they don't need it till Christmas time. So there's no rush to get them done. And the final project it come out was number five, which is my radiate jumper, which is what I'm really pleased about because that means that I can then do quite a bit more during the month on that one. I will also work on the other projects a little bit as well, just so that I've not let them languish for too long. Um, but it does mean that I can get, especially with the radiate, because that's going to take a while because it's a, a jumper. 
I will be able to get that done quite a bit. So I'm really pleased with how those have come out. And that is all that I have to tell you now. Um, I will obviously be back at the end of February, beginning of March with February's Roundup. But I'd just like to say thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for coming back to see what I've been up to and what I'm making. And I shall catch up with you hopefully in a month's time. Have a good month. Take care. Bye-bye.